Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day. And we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best. And you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake. Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Happy Friday, September 8th. Hope everybody is well rested and ready to roll. We've got, well, when the VIX froze, it was up uh, about 0.4, percent we'll, we'll see where it shakes out. The S&P has now climbed back up into green territory, so it's kind of been waffling between a potential Rick and a potential AM iron condor. So I think we'll be doing a AM iron condor. I don't think we'll get the VIX contraction, but it's right in between. Yeah, I'd say I'd give the nod slightly to the power hour one as well. I tried to get that same guy to do this one, and he kind of flaked out on me, so I had to find somebody else. But it'll do. It'll get you, get you going, get your blood pumping. All right, three and a half, three minutes till the bell. Looks like the duck and the just sell puts will not qualify. Unless we get a little move down by a few points in SPX before the open here. I've got an order in to buy my longs for my AM ratio. Looks like maybe 35 wide. S&P up one. NASDAQ down three, everything opening pretty flat. Well, we've got a good start to September anyway, zero DTE wise. So let's hope that uh, train continues on through today. I will also be doing a Dick K special and potentially a quiet lunch if things stay stable. All right, a little less than one minute to the bell. ES is still right near unchanged. <clears throat> mm. Which means we should have a slight 
bump up in the VIX, not a VIX contraction, I would guess. Based on watching it this morning before the uh, index options freeze up in the last 15 minutes leading up to the bell. And now it's down a little bit. So we'll get a little, little bump up in VIX at the open, it looks like. Which means no Rick for me, and I will be doing an AM ratio iron condor. Like 35 wide. This is a $30 stop on this Friday version. Trying to get filled at 1935. Build at 1950. So I've got the 4470 and the 4435 for my strikes. SPX bouncing a little bit at the open. Got a expected move of a little over 20 points plus or minus on the day. Seventy one to the upside and thirty one to the downside. Now S and P up five, VIX is contracting. Showing a tiny gap down in VIX. VIX now down a little over 1%. So I would consider taking a uh, discretionary RIC if uh, we keep in a pretty tight range this morning. So for my, <coughs> excuse me, for my Friday iron condor, I close out half at 50% of credit received and then the other half at 80%. My initial stop loss is 30 bucks and then I move that to 10 if I hit 50%. So we got that little bounce off the bottom yesterday. Looks like we're getting a little continuation out of the gate today.
got a time fly from a couple days ago that was close to profit target. It's getting it's close to about looks like it's at about four percent profit right now. Looking for between five and ten. This little push up isn't helping it. If if we roll back over, even back down to where we opened, we just should be able to book a six percent plus profit on that. MES on one of those on the uh, MES strangle with 83 DTE. We were close to rolling calls down, but I'm going to hold for now. Kind of bounced up today. So if we, if we continue lower, I'll need to roll those calls down, but we're pretty well centered. And on the other one, it's currently trading at about 49. If we can get out for 44, we would hit our profit target on that one after adjustments. Euro getting a little bounce today. Got a couple of hedgehogs we need to take off. One in oil, one in NASDAQ. Both are down to 7 DTE. Both will book a little profits. I got filled at 1950 on my AM ratio. TikTok's coming in soft. So my quiet lunch today basically just is a, as long as the move from the open stays within a half percent, either up or down, we'll be good to go for that one. And uh, my version is at 11.15 Central entry. Oh yeah, was, well there's a gap gap up or down point point five percent and then move up or down point five percent. Obviously the gap was zero so good to go there. So as long as we just stay within a half percent on the moves from the open now. That one will qualify.
you'd had to be pretty aggressive to get your JSPs filled at the open. And that thing just kind of took off. Most likely you would have been chasing. Didn't qualify anyway, but. In a decent little quick decay coming in. Picks down one and a half. Russell and the Dow slightly red. Oh, Dow just ticked green. Gold and silver slightly green. Notes and bonds slightly green. Oil slightly green. Natty gas up one and a half percent. Grains a little bit red. Euro and the pound slightly green. Bitcoin flat. Still hanging around that 26,000 level. All right, well, while we're waiting, I am gonna go ahead and manage a couple other positions. I'm gonna close out the oil hedgehog. Looks like I'm going to close out the long duration short puts of that hedgehog. Vertical will expire worthless or we'll keep it on as a lotto. All right, just posted that in the Hedgehog channel. <coughs> also, same thing for NQ. Except we'll close both of these. Still some value left in the vertical. Both of these are at 7 DTE.
Well, it looked like there's a little value left in the vertical. You're letting me out for a buck fifty. How about a buck twenty-five. There we go. All right, I'll take my buck twenty-five. Just posted that one in the Hedgehog channel as well. Yeah, same with me, Dan B. I just <clears throat> I had to I just make an assumption of what I think the VIX is going to do based on the pre-market action. So I went with the AM ratio as opposed to Rick, but we'll see. I may still get myself into a Rick here today. It's been a while. I miss Rick, you know. Old friends. Haven't seen each other all week. Rick currently trading at about eleven eighty. I'm going to put in a discretionary Rick here. I'm going to put it at 11.40. We chop around here in this little level for a little bit. <clears throat> Might get filled. Let me come back and adjust it. Yeah, a GUI 3068. Check the uh, morning post. I posted the double calendars I'll be doing today. Just to refresh on that, I will be doing a three five. <clears throat> In fact, I gotta. It's a good time to do this. I've got to set my alarms to remind me. So my three five. Actually, I'm doing a three six that'll go in at two thirty. Got a three five that'll go in at two fifty. Got a six seven that'll go on at two fifteen. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I got my DKS reminder in. I've got my, I got to put my quiet lunch reminder in. I got to put my six, seven reminder in. All right, so I got my DKS, my quiet lunch, my six, seven, my three, six, my three, five. So if you hear alarms going off in the background, that's what that is. Yes, sir, Dick K. I've been doing that for a couple months. A few months. Two or three. Three. Um, I don't... I don't know if I ever said that. Did I? I think I said I sometimes will vary the entry time based on my availability or. I just, and part of it is just to keep me so I don't forget. I also would find myself forgetting oh you know i'm supposed to enter this somewhere near the close and then i just forget if i have a specific time it's helped keep me on track better with all the different things i'm trading and with the back test driven ones i just figured hey you know I'm trading the back test and this is the time that it tests the best let's go All right, let's see. Am I going to get filled on this Rick? Got my order at 1140. It's currently trading at about 1160. Was that comment to me, Dick? On on the calendar or somebody else? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind checking it out. I just I have a lot of little things going on, so I'd have to figure out if it's gonna if it would fit into my everything else. But yeah, it, it actually might be the way to go for what I'm doing.
<clears throat> Although I I keep an Outlook calendar too, so I may have to I would have to transition all the way over to Google. Hate the idea of using two different calendars. It's like my Rick, my discretionary Rick might hit here. It's getting close. There it is. All right, there's my discretionary Rick. Mara, why is your Google, why is your calendar crowded? You're retired. All you do is trade and climb. What could possibly be on your calendar? Go to your store, buy milk, buy butter. You put each one of those separately on your calendar. What's going on there? I got gotcha. you. Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, rules. I'm not sure if uh you're talking about a hundred miles, right? That would be what they call a century bike ride, I assume. Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit of a stiff ride. The old touche is going to be a little sore by the end of that one. I guess. Already at about 25, 20, over 25% decay in the AM iron condor. That won't be coming off until 50%, but nice decay already. All right, so decay says select and import the file you created. Okay, I gotcha. Cool. I'll, I'm going to check that out today. Yeah, with the whole VIX thing, for me, I just... I mean, I'm not going to get that granular to the one-tenth of one percent kind of situation. I look at it pre-market and I make a decision. I, I try not to overthink that too much. Now, I, I also get, you know, you're trying to trade a strategy based on a back test. You want to make sure you're 
following the exact criteria of the back test. I get that too. I'm just telling you how I do it. All right, SPX bouncing back up towards highs of day. 25 minutes till the Dick K special kicks in. All right, so my Rick, I got in at 11.40. So my exit would be 14.85. SPX, new highs on the day. Grab myself a little cup of coffee. Be back in one minute. So one of my one of my boys is in eighth grade, so he'll be going to high school next year. And I am uh, we're looking at a a private school, and the name of the school is Saint Pius the Tenth. And so the real reason that I want him to go there is because every all their like logos and gear and everything, if you uh, Shortened St. Pius the 10th, it's shortened to SPX. So like all their hats, their shirts, it all says SPX on it. I'm like, I that that's a good fit. I mean, that's that just fits all around. I could slide a little zero DTE on the end of it and I think I could cover all bases. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's really the only reason I would send them to school there. No other reason.
Yeah, if the mascot was a duck, that'd be amazing. That's a good question. I don't even know what their mascot is. Let me see. St. Pius X. Ah, the Warriors. All right. SPX Warriors. <laughs> Speaking of Warriors, SPX pushing. So we're at a current move from the open of up 0.39%. So up to the expected move or beyond would be uh, potentially negate the quiet lunch if it's up there by that time. We've got a while, a couple hours. That is true, Mauro. That is very true. Mauro, I got to I got to say, I, I got to call you out in a good way. You you've really changed your mindset. I got to applaud you, man. Like over the last I would say over the last 60 to 90 days you I've seen you go from what was a pretty negative, a lot of negativity in your posts to, I mean, you're, you're, I, I can tell you've been working on it or I can tell something's happened that has shifted your, your mentality because you have completely shifted into very, a much more positive mindset kind of person compared to just a couple months ago. And I, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Like I, I, I've just, I've watched it and I, I applaud you for it because it's a huge deal in trading. And I, I would, I would imagine some of it is, you know, the, just the deep dive analysis that you've done, which has kind of helped recreate your perception of taking losses you're a much better loser than you used to be. Let's just say that. And just overall, better, way more positive, man. So nice job. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. That little push was short-lived. All right. There's a lot of posts about this VIX. Did we figure it out? Do we have it? Can we, can we come up with the common ground on what the official reading is going to be? Yeah.
Yeah. I mean, Mauro, honestly, like I was getting messages from other members. Like it was, it was affected to the, your, your negative, your negativity was a little bit toxic to the point where I was getting messages from other people saying like, Oh man, poor Mauro, you know, he's doing it. He's doing it again. Like that kind of thing. And I, and I'm just, I'm serious. It, you've, you've completely shifted, man. I, I just, I can see it. I can, you know, in the couple of videos you've done, I can hear it in your voice. I can hear it in your, I can feel it in your posts. So it's just, and, and, and if it, if it was, if we could feel it, then it was affecting you internally, whether you knew it or not. So it's good stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking, you know, 90 plus days ago. Honestly, I, I don't know exactly when it was, but I, I, I remember specifically like a couple posts when it, whenever it was 60, 90 days ago, I was like, huh, that sounds like a new morrow. I just thought to myself, and then it just, it continued to, to stay, you know, positive and just a whole better mindset and way of thinking about trading. Because yeah, man, I, I mean, I, um, I, uh, I see, I've seen it so many times where people get into that and not necessarily, this is, it's not, this is not necessarily what you're doing, but they get into this. Oh, I have bad luck. Oh, sure enough. I'm in the trade. So we lose. Oh, you know, that whole like self deprecating, um, you know, just negative. I can't win. The market's always out to get me kind of thing. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying that was really necessarily a lot of the stuff you were doing, but I've seen just that negative infiltration just take people out of the game. I've seen it over and over and over. And I was I was nervous that that you were going down that rabbit hole. But you've you've completely changed it around, man. So it's awesome to see. And so maybe those are some things I should have said to you in private instead of to everyone, but <laughs> I hope, I hope you take it as a compliment because it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I open my mouth when I'm not supposed to, but, but honestly, I, there's nothing. I mean, I just all, all good. All hope you take it as all positive what I'm saying. Cause it is. And, and hey, listen, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of others who, you know, think the same way or, you know, how it's that negative self-talk. I can, I mean, I catch myself doing it still sometimes, like calling myself a idiot, you stupid mf -er. why'd you do that? You know, all those fun things that we like to say to each other, ourselves, but, but I've, you know, so I, I had to, I had to myself, I had to work through that. I had to get to the point where I would stop doing that. <clears throat> Still do. But we don't 
because we don't we don't understand how much that actually affects us in our in our decision making. <laughs> mind is a powerful thing my friends we have to continue to just pour positivity on it so otherwise it can take us down the wrong way. Yeah, it's a great book. That was one of the first kind of, uh, whatever you want to call it, self-improvement books I ever read. Yeah, I love the idea of what you're doing too, Bianca, on that, on that sheet. For those of you who haven't seen in, in Trader Bianca's plan, she's got a, uh, that she shared in her trade plans on that spreadsheet she has a drop down that kind of grades not based on pnl but based on i guess how would you describe it based on your your feeling about yourself during different aspects of the trade You know, Chad, who runs the uh, the day trading live stream, he went he went through that too. Like I would I would hear him on the live streams, and he would be saying like, oh, "Of course, of course, it went on for profit. I just got out, you know, or you know, of course, I just took a loss. I wasn't going to take it, but I jumped in, and sure enough, it went against me. You know, he he went through a period of that, and really had to had to work through that, and and got it way, way, way better. And he's a way, way better trader now because of it. I mean, there's more, more to it than just that. It didn't just flip a switch and he was a better trader because he, he fixed that. It's all, you know, it's a process, but man, it's so, it's so, it's so apparent when you see somebody else doing it, it's not so apparent when you're the one doing it. A friend told me that. <laughs> All right, about five minutes until the DKS. Oh, there's my DKS alarm. All right, so it's tracking right now. It looks like at about the 4485. 
on the call side. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I did notice the timing of that one was pretty, pretty critical. I'm just getting my stuff set up, but yeah, thanks for the reminder. So 4485 on the calls and 4470 on the puts for the shorts. We're in an upside move of 0.43%. Tapping on the upside expected move area. My quiet lunch today would be at 1115 Central, yeah, 1215 Eastern. One minute, 20 seconds until DKS liftoff. I'm looking at the 4485 calls and the 4470 puts for my shorts. Trying to get filled at 9 55. 9 45. Fill at 9 45 on the DKS. E. Allison, is there a way with toss when selecting all strikes that it starts more near market price? Every time I try to change to all, it basically, it starts basically at zero strike and I have a lot of scrolling. Oh, you can, you can change the uh, number of strikes like right here on this dropdown. So I always have it to all. So yeah, I got to scroll to add the money, but you could change it to 14 or you can type in here, whatever you want, like to only display 30, right? And then that's all it'll show. Let 
which in a period like this where you know we don't need to go that far out of the money 30 is fine if you need to go further out you just need to open up some more strikes Yeah, you can type in whatever number you want there. They just in the default drop down. Yeah, they have all or 14, but yep. <laughs> I need a, uh, a DKS lead up intro. Not a bad idea. I There's a lot of little jingles I could... We might need. Move up currently point four three percent from the open. Hovering right at that expected move to the upside. Let's see if it's going to hold. My AM ratio hanging under the 44.7 call, 44.70 call strike. So that could use a little down move. The DKS, of course, is a little bit more bullish. My Rick started to starting to push out of range. It's got a ways to go before it hits profit target, though. I'm going to need up above 44.83 area to hit profit target to the upside in Rick. So for next week on the econ reports, nothing on Monday, nothing on Tuesday, CPI pre-market Wednesday, PPI pre-market Thursday, uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index pre-market Friday, and University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment after the market opens Friday. And SPX pushing. VIX down 4%, down to 13.8. Um, Annette, on the uh, one, two, and one, three, I do those every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it, it won't have an effect. However, like when I do it Monday, um, I mean, so on Monday, the one, two would be the Tuesday, Wednesday, right? So, I mean, you're, 
if you do a one, I, I would, I'll pro on Monday, I'll probably do a one, two and a one, three. That way I'm hitting my longs in on both CPI day and PPI day. When I do it on Tuesday, I'll probably just be doing one twos. Because the, you know, the CPI and the PPI, if you look at the options right now, I think PPI on the day is the 14th. So I think those have a little bit higher volatility right now as far as the uh, option cycles go. Yeah, so the PPI, uh, CPI day is at 11 and a half and the PPI day is at 12, so a little bit higher. So I don't really differentiate between those too much. So Monday, I'll probably do some one twos, some one threes, Tuesday, I'll do just one twos. And then Wednesday, I would do um, one twos. What you'll, what you'll notice too, uh, a lot of times is leading up to these days, like the day before. So like on Tuesday, for example, even though you're selling the shorts on the day of the of the event. So on Tuesday, we would be selling our shorts on the 13th. A lot of times that day, it's like, it's like the, the expansion and implied volatility on those options has been pumped up. But the day before, a lot of times it can contract is what it is what it looks like to me. I don't have any statistical significant data to back this up. But, but just in my, what I've noticed is a lot of times if you get in uh, like we like we enter these at 11 a.m. Central now, um, or I do. The what what you're seeing is a lot of time the day before a big event like that, you might be able to even close it out for 10 percent same day. That's a lot of the times when we get those same day pops where we can just get out and not even hold it overnight. So, um. So sometimes on those days, I even go bigger, you know, kind of my, my position size is kind of five to 10 K depending on my perceived opportunity or, or risk. And, and so on a day like that, I would be leaning higher up towards that, you know, higher end of uh, position size and then try to hopefully take some of it off or at least, or all or some of it off before the end of the day and not hold it overnight. I do try to, if I'm doing like a five, seven or a six, seven, I do try to position that a little bit better. I've rent, you know, if there's different econ reports, I'll try to position that a little bit to try to benefit from putting my longs on a higher relevant event day. But like, you know, this one, I'm, I'm still going to do a six, seven, even though my shorts would be on the PPI day. And I think a lot of, I think some of the, some of the value of those PPI option days, which is the 14th after the CPI, after the CPI is released that I think that will contract some of the volatility in the PPI day options because they are, you know, tied pretty, uh, they are they're tied together a little bit, a little bit correlated, PPI at CPI. All right, so for DKS, I've got my first profit target at 
Hey, Mirage, I just saw your post. Make sure you're posting in the live chat channel during the live streams. Looks like you got your question answered, though. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off here. Um, looks like uh, the quiet lunch will be in effect if we don't push up too much higher than high of day by entry time. And then that would be it for me until power hour. I don't have any PM iron condors on the docket for Fridays. So everybody have a good rest of your day. See you at power hour. Cheers.